Hello, everyone. My name is Edmund Chang. I'm an assistant professor of English at Ohio University. Uh, I work on um, 20th century, 21st century American literature, popular culture, video game studies, and gender and sexuality studies. And I hope to present to you some ideas that I've been thinking about um, in relation to games, uh, the environment, um, and specifically in my own work to the idea of queerness. And thank you to all of the games for our future folks and for your attention. And hopefully this will inspire some really interesting and cool games. So the, the main idea that I am going to sort of present to you or think about is this notion of queer gaming, which is an essay that I wrote that appeared in Queer Game Studies. Um, it's a great collection. If you're interested, you should definitely check it out. And queer gaming for me is this idea about thinking about the ways that games um, themselves are uh, normative objects or they encode um, and default to uh, social, cultural, political uh, identity norms, um, things like race, gender, uh, sexuality, ability, class, all of those things are often normed in games. Um, and often uh, the characters that you can play, the environments that you can play in, the stories that you can, uh, that you can sort of experience are all often organized around straight, white, cisgender, able-bodied men, women, and so on and so forth. So queer gaming for me is this way to challenge these kinds of stereotypical or status quo ideas and to really think about the ways that games themselves can um, both mechanically um, and narratively um, and even graphically sort of address these kinds of um, issues. So with that in mind, then, um, I think you know, thinking about game design or thinking about how you would sort of engage um, solving a problem or addressing an issue like climate or the environment or any other kind of sort of social justice things do need to sort of take into account the ideas um, that or the idea that uh, our world is is definitely normed and normative in a lot of ways. And so queer gaming really sort of tries to um, uh, provoke or, you know, I, I wrote this as a kind of manifesto to sort of think about ways that we can queer design, um, that we can queer play itself, uh, to think about ways that when we play games that it's not just about the sort of uh, normative settings um, that are often, you know, sort of typically masculinist, typically um, all about kind of accrual or, or conflict um, and that sort of stuff. And there's a lot of games now, um, especially board games that are thinking about like collaborative play, particularly in a time like our current moment, the pandemic, environmental um, degradation, all these sorts of things are things that we need to think about. Uh, queer gaming also thinks about this idea of remediation, which is to sort of bring in other kinds of texts or or, or perspectives that are not just from games, but from art or from um, uh, from fiction, or in this case, like things like paratext, like fan fiction or machinima or modding. I mean, this is all swirling around in game fan culture uh, for sure, but I think it's really important to sort of think about the ways that those can be in conversation, especially since games themselves often are are really black box that people don't ever often have access to code or the modes of production. And so, um, and the last thing is to think about queer futures um, and how we might imagine or envision games down the line that are more inclusive, that are more diverse, that are, are more sort of um, radically thinking about different possibilities. So um, to give you some ideas to, to link queer gaming particularly to environments or to nature um, or to, to addressing climate change or whatever, I do think that um, there are you know, alliances to be made. And so I'm offering a couple of ideas. So here's a really quick quote from uh, a book called Queer Ecologies, which is sort of trying to, to ask us to think about what it means to, to think about you know, what we do with nature or how we imagine the environment and how that might actually connect to um, um, ways we understand gender, sexuality, race, and all these sorts of things. Um, 
And then uh, I offer a couple of, you know, things that I've worked on and things that I've been thinking about. So I have a, a, a really short provocation essay in Emedius Res, which is an online um, journal, uh, thinking about Pokemon Go uh, uh, and the ways that when you play Pokemon Go or games like it, that it does sort of force you to think about how um, you interact with space, how you think about interacting with uh, um, uh, your environment. And so uh, I think that, you know, um, we could think about the ways that, you know, when a bunch of people are playing in a, in a public space that that sometimes can be uh, unsettling to norms or to challenge certain kinds of norms. Obviously, there are also problems too. And I think that's something um, that uh, is a useful thing to sort of consider. Another thing that I've been doing um, uh, in my own classes, I often teach a class on fantasy literature and things like that. And so I've been incorporating this idea of LARP uh, in my courses and how live action role playing games, um, I used to run a fantasy rope, uh, LARP uh, many, many years ago called Archaea. And that you know, when you are running around on campus or when you're running around in the woods that uh, and playing a game that that negotiation also um, can uh, reveal different ways that you interact with in the environment and with each other and those sorts of things. Um, and then sort of the final provocation is that there's a lot of speculative fiction, science fiction right now that's being written, particularly by um, uh, people of color, particularly by um, um, LGBT or allied uh, writers and that are thinking about um, how to to imagine the future, especially in in light of of uh, climate change or or other kinds of disasters or problems. Um, and so here are just a, a, a tiny few um, uh, ideas, uh, books that you can sort of look to and think about um, as well. So uh, I hope um, these are useful and I hope that you find uh, a ways to sort of uh, think about how to de design a game that not just incorporates like uh, thinking about nature or thinking about community, but also a very particular kind of engagement with particular identities or bodies um, or issues or problems. And along with the video, I'll uh, send along some um, other artifacts that hopefully you can take a look at and, and think about as well. So uh, I look forward to uh, what you produce and uh, uh, good luck and stay safe out there.